It sounds weird, but this fanny pack can kill you. Gonna get dark, babe, the noon. Enduro riders need tools, and I keep mine back here, buffeted from my body by, ooh, a nice soft lunch, my water bladder, a back protector. But fanny tool packs put sharp instruments directly against your body. A most common crash sends me over the bike via the handlebars, which subsequently sends a Phillips head into my groin. Of course there are other locations and other crashes, which might send an Allen key into my liver, a needle nose plier into my kidney. The fashion world says there is no safe way to wear a fanny pack, so too in ours. Unless we choose the right fanny pack. And take three examples. The Scott Race Day Hit Bag, $40. The OGO 450 Tool Pack, $60. And the GV704 Gravel T, $90. The cheapo bag is backed with nothing but neoprene. If you've seen Jaws, you know that ain't good enough. For $50 more, you get a semi-rigid backing and full waterproofing, so that leaves you mildly impaled but with dry socks. The middle-priced OGO is my choice. Its tool area is backed with semi-rigid armor, dense foam, and rubber. It's very unlikely to puncture. And then on one side, we have a mostly waterproof pocket. On the other side, there is an expandable beverage holder. So you can enjoy an apple juice while you call an ambulance for the less guarded riders. Those who choose poor tool packs that turn people into flathead shish kebabs. And trust me, I know a surgeon who removes these things. It definitely can happen. Ooh. Next dangerous piece of kit, aftermarket gas caps. If you pay $20 for a cheapo cosmetic job, you're getting $2 in plastic and two cents in a rubber o-ring. That's a bad deal. Especially when it gives your bike an evap leak for failing to seal properly. Maybe that lights your dash up like a Christmas tree. Maybe you just have to ride behind the thing breathing gasoline. Or maybe when I crash and the plastic shatters as plastic does, my tank vomits fuel onto a hot mess. Bad gas caps like this Biker's Choice Scully really piss me off. So I'll put it next to a $140 Vortex V3 just because they wouldn't want me to. Here we have a safety lock, a good start. Then I get triple the O-rings here, here, and here. If any gas somehow makes it past, I have a reservoir to collect it. And then we hear a double check valve. These are finicky to take apart, so leave yours alone and study mine. We have a classic one-way ball valve, plus a more innovative, yet redundant, plate valve. Either will block fumes from escaping, and either will let air into your tank to relieve negative pressure. There are just two, because two is one and one is none. Finally, obviously, the whole thing is metal. I know 140 seems like a lot for a glorified bottle cap, but please avoid the cheap alternatives. And they lack the engineering, and that is really dangerous. The third most dangerous motorcycle gear seems innocuous. External jacket hydration. A little water never killed anyone, until this sucker almost killed me. See, external hose routing puts a little hook near your chest. And when they're empty and you go to open your face shield, it's very easy to catch your cuff on that hook on the way back down. All of a sudden I'm panicking, wondering why the hell I can't pull my arm back to the bars. It's very unnerving, and so much so that I ripped the hooks off my own Raiden DKR, resorting to running internal hydration hoses. Less than ideal, but the alternative is... Oh boy. If the hydration hook is a bit obscure, our next danger to motorcyclists certainly isn't. Pointy mods. 
Kiryakin foot pegs, literally named the dagger, Avon spike grips, pokey LA choppers axle caps, and before you start bashing cruisers, check out these factory effects sport bike windscreen screws, hallmark of pedestrian safety in red so you can't see the blood. Submitted for your comparison, the kitchen knife handlebar clamp, the M4 carbine engine bars, the cheese grater tank pad. I mean seriously, what are we doing here? In a high speed crash, the softest, roundest parts of our motorcycles become deadly. Do we really want to sharpen them? If for some nihilistic reason you don't care about yourself, think of your bike. And stock protrusions on a motorcycle are designed to slide, to minimize damage, but these, these dig into the pavement, sending your baby cartwheeling into oblivion. Am I being a bit dramatic? Always. I understand that pointy mods mildly raise your risk factor and that the style is majorly worth it to some. Well, that's cool. Just be aware that you could be in for a little extra poke. <laughs> Hands are useful, which is why I take issue with the next danger to dexterity. Split leather. The fibrous part of animal hide is already halfway broken apart. Okay for fashion, but useless for falls. You can find split leather in jackets and pants when dealing with extremely negligent manufacturers. But most often, you'll find this menace in gloves. The suede palm. It purports to be leather, it promises a lot, but when palm hits the grindstone, it's gone. Especially in the case of waterproof gloves. And this is actually AX suede, which is marginally better than most, except for the fact that it's mounted on an all-weather garment. So when I use this glove in the rain, like I'm supposed to, well, suede degrades in the rain. I'm losing layers already, and I haven't even hit the pavement yet. Now right about now, you're probably expecting... But not this time because all the dangerous gear I mentioned is small potatoes compared to this big one. Avoid the menaces if you can, but most of all, ride safe. Yeah.